Welcome! The film you are about to see documents a correspondence network that crosses geopolitics, cultures, and time, bringing people together through a global human expression. Images of Global Peace, the male artumentary, is about sharing unfiltered human expression outside the reach of commercial and government interests. Male art is a counterbalance to the ongoing homogenization of culture by linking subcultural exchange through individual global expression. Remember, people and cultures used to live in equilibrium with the rays of the sun, sustaining life with all things natural. However, this has changed. Today, many cultures are bound to the use of concentrated ancient sun rays in the forms of coal, petroleum, natural gas, and their various chemical derivatives. Further, people find themselves bound to media boxes developed for promotion of commercial interests and ideologies apart from organic culture. As an alternative, male art has many stories to tell, the variations of which are unlimited and ultimately resolved in the eye of the beholder. Male art transcends, or better yet, transgresses geopolitical and cultural boundaries, connecting people through raw, human expression. Male art promotes thought, spawns emotion, and stimulates the imagination, all the while connecting the dots around the world at the individual level. Welcome to our global male art family. Enjoy the film and tag, you're it. It's your turn to share and share alike. And now, images of global peace. Artists from all over the world have sent in the expressions that they want to express from within inside of themselves, how they see the world through their eyes. Some of the artists have sent in paintings depicting the Holocaust, the ultimate end of the world, pollution. They're expressing themselves through the medium that they have chosen. Images of global peace is what people think. There's never been a better time to buy. takes many forms, and there are mail art shows around the world. Our particular show and network is called Images of Global Peace. We use a very broad definition of peace for our network. We don't mean global peace as in no war. That's one aspect of what we're saying. We also mean inner peace, peace and harmony among human beings. Here we have an expression of global peace. Uh, this is a documentation from another male art show where the artists design stamps and send them out around the world. You can see the square and round images. Well, the center was blank when they were sent out, and they were networked. Very, you know, if I got a copy of this, I would share it with my friends, etc., etc., etc. And what came back were images within these stamps, all put together, and then passed out at Peace Park, where. Um, during the anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Male artists mess with technology from time to time, as well as two-dimensional works, three-dimensional works, what have you. Here we have the Pan Scan, which is a computer teleconference for male artists to share their shows and where you can send these things, addresses and the like. 
This particular piece we're seeing here came from Spain. About three months after we got the piece, actually, just as we were hanging the show, we noticed that if this particular piece was moved in the light, that you could see it's, there's a photographic plate attached. Um, this article is about flags for peace, and 500 people made their own individual personal flags in which they sent them to Japan, and they were all sewn together into, into a huge flag for peace. Here's a work from Shozo Shimamoto. He has a project called Networking for Head, or uh, the Head for Global Peace. They've made a plaster cast of Shozo's head, sent it around the world uh, with various artists, adding various little artworks, adding some paint or stickers or what have you, and then sent them back and they were all on display. The Head for Peace. <laughs> There's uh, all different themes. The environment, peace, uh, inner peace, music making, cassette culture, noise. When it comes to mail art, there's really no boundaries. If you want to have a show on how to use recycled cans, by all means, go for it. Here's a piece that came in from Israel in multiple languages. You can see the peace dove and the peace sign. Interesting stuff. Ah, and this is a, a little zine that came in on the Tartu Shadows Project. Um, John Held Jr. went into the Soviet Union and participated in Shadows. We've actually got a clip of that at the end of the show. Here we have more rubber stamps. This is rubber stamp art from A1 Waste Paper in, in England. We have actually cut these stamps up, Xeroxed them, cut them, colored them, and put them on our envelopes and sent them around. Mail art is a very sharing, sharing medium. Uh, here's some paintings from Finland. Helsinki, Finland. Some of them are actually portions of paintings. Uh, many artists will take their paintings and cut them into sections and then send the sections to various shows forming a collective whole. Here's a piece from the old Soviet Union where an artist used uh, used carbon paper for his canvas. And I'm not sure exactly, really I'm not sure at all, what the translation would be from this used carbon paper. It wouldn't surprise me that the KGB had a file on it and or the CIA. Uh, many of the packages are inspected when going from country to country. In fact, we published a 72-page microzine or magazine on microfiche documenting the show with names and addresses and examples of the artwork and graphics and poetry and writing that came in. And it took up to six months for them to get overseas, actually. A normal letter taking a few weeks and we received correspondence back that it actually took several months for many of these microfiche to make it overseas. Um, I have no explanation for that other than uh, what one might assume. The artwork comes from everywhere. Uh, this particular piece is from Italy. The artist used various colors of construction paper and did some cutouts and titled this piece Images of Global Peace. Here we have a series of uh, note cards on behalf of the environment, each card depicting a, a, a different uh, echo uh, system. Here we have a series of paintings depicting uh, nuclear explosions over the capitals of the world. Uh, Art Nuco is a, a project whereby uh, these paintings are actually touring the capitals of the world, and uh, the artist from Canada has made a series of postcards to announce the show and to spread the word. When you look at these, they certainly are very powerful in their message. It doesn't take CNN to interpret what this person is trying to express and then sharing that with us. I think we pretty much get a good idea of what's being said here. Again, mail art comes in all forms, all genres, all styles, uh, whatever. Uh, it can be Xerox art. Uh, uh, here we have uh, some Xeroxing, some computer-generated imagery some uh, stamps, cutouts from other postcards, can be anything. Here we have a Xerox of a photograph from Poland. The artist is sharing his work in front of his studio and sent us a Xerox along. Now, Clemente Paden of Uruguay does some very, very political artwork dealing with uh, the corporate state, dealing with the environment, dealing with hunger. You can see here Clemente is uh, taking a slight jab at the male art genre or medium in and of itself. Male art is not sufficient. Male art networking is about real people expressing themselves and expressing their inner feelings and beliefs, or it uh, provides a forum for people to share their expression. 
we've had poetry, short stories, prose, paintings, rubber stamps, cassettes, videotapes. This is uh, a piece by the Cracker Jack Kid, uh, a network prayer for peace. It's written actually on hand-pressed paper. The Cracker Jack Kid, uh, for various projects, has been known to uh, collect items of clothing, for instance, and shredding them up, and then hand-pressing them into paper and sending them out as artworks. Is a very radical act, radical act, radical act. Here we've got Plague of the Art Zombies. The artist actually uh, created a series of stamps similar to postage stamps that could be put on envelopes or letters or what have you. Some of the artists will do posters uh, in addition to uh, three-dimensional works, two-dimensional works, real-time artwork. This book is one book of a hundred books, each book with a thousand birds. And together, the books would equal a hundred thousand birds, representing the number of birds killed by the Exxon Valdez. Here's Joe, he's one of the Nash Champion soccer players. He made a peace wheel out of returned postage cards. We sent out a thousand cards notifying people about the show. This particular show, the Images of Global Peace show, uh, was on display at Sangamon State University in Springfield, Illinois uh, for about a month and then it moved over to the state capitol main rotunda. 2,000 people a day starting their tours of the state capitol at the Images of Global Peace show. Um, this piece was very moving. This piece is from Italy, very colorful. Uh, here's a piece from Poland. This is computer generated, computer generated art. There's no censorship. Whatever sent in is displayed. One piece might be frivolous to one person, but have great significance to another. In images of global peace and in male art in general, we do not judge one person's work from another. This particular piece, it's about the shadows. The Shadows Project is involved, but it also uh, covers the Barbie culture, or the, the culture that's perpetuated by the mass media, that there's one way to be, one way to look. Be like Ken and Barbie and be happy. It says, uh, Barbie radiates during a performance at Hiroshima. Here you see envelopes that the artworks come in, or the graphics, or what have you. They're decorated as well bringing the uh, postal service workers into the mail art network. Um, it's not just the folks that view the show, it's not just the folks that make them, but the postal workers are involved too. There are many ways to get involved in mail art. One way of getting in anyway is to develop a mailing list, to get a list of names of artists who participate in mail art and come up with a theme and then send a notice out. Design a creative expression on your own and send a notice out and to however many artists you want and uh, within a couple weeks you'll start getting artworks in and to host a mail art show. Uh, this particular piece is a call uh, from Yugoslavia. Uh, prior to the breakdown in Yugoslavia, Romania had fallen, the, the Romanian regime had fallen. Uh, this is a call for art supplies and food to help starving artists, both starving uh, for food and for means of expression. And uh, we helped out and sent along some care packages. Many different things have come through. This particular piece is from the old Soviet Union prior to, to its collapse. You can kind of sense what this person is expressing with his artwork. It doesn't really need much to be said. Here's a piece from Czechoslovakia. This piece also, I feel, shows a very strong statement. Again, any medium, uh, no one is judged any better than the other. Whatever is sent in is, is displayed. We don't censor, we don't judge. Here's our final piece. This is an envelope, actually, that came in. I have not found a stamp on this envelope yet. Somehow it slipped through. Stay tuned, folks. Images of global peace is what people think. People think. People think. Okay, so we're talking about the history of mail art. And... Um, there are different explanations as to where male art comes from. It, one of them is an art world explanation. And that one tends to emphasize things like conceptual art, uh, fluxus, people like Ray Johnson, people who are artists um, using the medium of uh, the postal system to make art and to create artistic situations. Another stream of explanation for where male art comes from 
is in terms of popular culture and uh, the fact that people decorate envelopes and uh, make pieces of uh, creative work that get sent through the mails either as part of a, a letter or as a separate entity. And uh, if you trace this back, I happen to be um, curating a wobbly art show, wobbly being industrial workers of the world, and noticed that there were a couple of postal cards in that show from Joe Hill, who's you know, a very famous um, wobbly organizer and songwriter. And so these were dated 1914, 1917, uh, uh, early pieces uh, that uh, were sent out through the mails to friends. Since then, um, there have been a number of ways in which mail art has uh, manifested itself. Aside from the individual correspondences between postal artists, uh, there's been uh, the idea of having a show around a particular theme, or sometimes the theme is open. Uh, lately, there's been the whole emphasis uh, upon uh, people traveling around as part of a mail art piece, um, mail art tourism. And so uh, the idea basically is to circulate uh, creative ideas around the world. It's a global kind of picture. That's why it fits so well in the idea of images of global peace. Uh, beyond borders, beyond commodity exchanges, direct communication between people who uh, want to make creative statements to one another uh, that are not regulated by governments or commercial considerations.
Artists from all over the world have sent in the expressions that they want to express. Images of global peace is what people think.